Australian cyclone risk increasing on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 8th. Right now, it's quite similar to what we left the tropical regions with yesterday on our update. 13 storms have formed so far, the latest being this new tropical cyclone has formed just off the northern coast of Australia. Invest 98S still hasn't been given a name yet from the authorities, and BOM haven't yet designated it as a tropical cyclone. 55 days until the Atlantic hurricane season begins and you can see generally quiet pattern across the Atlantic Ocean but there is that line of frontal system moving across the United States right now delivering some significant rainfall. These are the areas that are important though for the tropical zones. 50% chance of development still for a tropical disturbance which is located not far from Palau heading through the Philippine Sea towards the eastern coast of the Philippines, eastern islands. And the tropical cyclone that we designated on yesterday's bulletin still as a tropical storm with 40 mile per hour winds and an estimated pressure of around 1,002 millibars in the Timor Sea to the northwest of Darwin, gradually moving westwards and then southwestwards with a significant chance of development, uh, rapid development possibly, when it gets into the Indian Ocean proper. Elsewhere across the Indian Ocean though, it's looking rather quiet, a bit of cloud cover over Madagascar, but certainly nothing of a tropical nature, uh, certainly cyclonic nature, uh, so things are very quiet over in this end. Satellite imagery across the globe, take a look for some red areas there that denote uh, rapid amounts of rainfall uh, accumulations and possibly flash flooding concerns of one area or so in the Central African region and you can just about make out that tropical cyclone there as well. And this is a wide shot of the whole region here on the Himawari 9 satellite. The bottom side there, the Australian region and that tropical storm. And towards the top there you can see that rotation, very broad rotation of Invest 90W, the system that could be heading towards the Philippines. Uh, scrolling down a little bit further there you can see that region a little bit more clearly and this is a close-up floater imagery on our website you can find this at force13.com uh, of this tropical storm that we've designated of course still not officially a tropical cyclone yet and being sheared rather dramatically actually from the east uh, so certainly a lopsided system with lots of convection blowing up on that western side but it does look like it's got that circulation going and from indications, still not direct indications, I don't think, uh, but we are in uh, inferencing that this does have 40 mile per hour winds, and that of course cements tropical cyclone status. Just a quick look at Invest 90W there, extremely broad rotation, not much to it just yet. Uh, convection displaced to the northwest, and a quick radar look there, but we don't have much time to look at that uh, for the Australian region. You can find new animated radar on the Force 13 website as well, and these satellite uh, sea surface temperatures warm off the coast of Mexico. Uh, pushing 30 degrees in the Pacific. In the Atlantic, still got some catching up to do, but that's normal at this time of year, close to 28 degrees in the Western Caribbean. And in the Indian Ocean, very warm at sea surface temperatures in the deep tropics, uh, but in the main tropical zones there, we're looking at around 30 degrees Celsius in the uh, Bay of Bengal. Southwest Indian Ocean, still piping hot, still a little bit of energy left there in the Mozambique Channel, certainly, and towards the Masserine Islands, temperatures around 28 degrees Celsius there enough for tropical cyclone development. Australian region, we are of course very concerned because of those piping hot sea surface temperatures off the coast of Western Australia, well above 30 degrees, pushing close to 32 over large areas there off the uh, northern coast of Western Australia, exactly where this cyclone is headed. And in the South Pacific, temperatures pushing over 30 degrees Celsius as well as Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, north of Fiji and over Samoa. Philippine Sea also warming up nicely as well where that invest is currently 30 degrees plus it will drop a little bit once this system gets close to the Philippine Islands around about 28 degrees near Catanduanes. 
The anomalies, it is warmer than average in the tropical zone of the Western Pacific and in the Southern Hemisphere, almost all over there. And once again, look at that extreme warm pool there off the coast of South America, uh, moving into the Eastern Pacific there. That is a big sign of an El Nino possibly on the way. Certainly that's what we're expecting later on this year. Oceanic heat content still very high values in the South Pacific, extending out over Samoa and towards the French Polynesian Islands. Uh, for Fiji and for Vanuatu, it's moderate, uh, but still decent. Western Pacific really starting to bulk in there as well with those warmer colours as well. Red zones there certainly expanding. And the Eastern Pacific already getting up there as well to moderate levels, which is more than can be said for what we saw in the peak of last season. So this is the GFS computer model expectations for the next five days, a short range. It does appear that the theme for this Philippine Sea system is that it will remain very large, broad and disorganised there and it only just really gets the tropical storm status, 45, maybe 50 mile per hour winds and the GFS has stayed true once again for the storm to recurve before reaching the islands. As a matter of fact, it is quite far away from a landfall now at the latest update there. And this is what's to come of the Australian cyclone. It does have a little bit of a slow start, but it does really get going once it passes the Kimberley region and then out over the more of the ocean and then towards the coast once again, getting extremely strong towards the end of day five this time on the GFS. Earlier on, the, on yesterday's run, it was day seven, day eight. They now have it as day five for it to be making its approach as an extremely powerful category four or five storm on the Sapphire Simpson scale of course that is still a little ways out but certainly growing support for an extremely powerful cyclone. Uh, the precipitation model broke so we're having to look at yesterday's again and I can tell you what's changed compared to what you're looking at. Not too much uh, but we are now expecting more precipitation for the Kimberley region compared to what this graphic is showing. Uh, we are expecting widespread 10 inch regions not far from Derby and Broome and for the Philippine region we're expecting less than what this earlier model was indicating. They were saying 13 inches there, 300 millimeters for the coast near Catanduanes, uh, but those amounts have decreased and we're now expecting probably 8 inches, 200 millimeters for coastal extremities of the eastern Philippine islands from Samar northwards to southeastern Luzon. Into the longer range then, taking a look at the Western Pacific first of all, that system continuing and it actually develops much stronger as it recurves and moves northeastwards. There it is, getting much stronger there to Category 1, maybe Category 2 typhoon status, although I doubt it will last very long at those higher latitudes on the same latitude as Taiwan there near the end, but moves out to sea rather than towards land areas. So that certainly isn't much of a concern and might be an interesting one to watch. But certainly um, a modest threat to the Philippines in the interim. And then take a look at that uh, cyclone smashing into the western coast of Australia, the coast of Western Australia. Um, a very powerful landfall there, GFS latest forecast indicating that it'll be around 915 millibars at landfall, 915. And that can't be ruled out now that it is within five to seven days there. Uh, thankfully, it is a very sparse area of land that will be impacting. I think it'll be just east of Port Hedland. Um, and it still remains to be seen just how strong, when and where that landfall will be. Watch very closely on that. Scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items as well as our still waiting for Hone t-shirt and you can request individual and full season storm animations on our store there as well. Well into the Silly Range we're looking out at the Western Pacific, what's left of that typhoon and another system that forms in the far eastern part of the Western Pacific, well where's it going? It's going the wrong way that's for sure, it moves eastwards firstly and then turns northwards and then northwesterly towards the end there, also reaching typhoon strength. First time we've seen it on the GFS, it's very long range so I wouldn't put any faith into that one at all. Uh, but stranger things have happened, but that would be uh, a very interesting case of a storm that at least starts out going the wrong way. 
You can chat about that and anything that you've seen on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat around the world, as well as plenty of other discussions on there. On this day, a beauty of a storm, at least in my opinion, Cyclone Kamisi on April the 8th, 1984, peaking as a Category 5 as it approached the coast of northern Madagascar. We also had the remnants of Lance, which were affecting New South Wales in Australia, uh, just turned post-tropical on that morning after it swept close to the Gold Coast region as a tropical storm. Uh, but certainly Kamisi there with that beautiful eye photo, a rare astronaut photograph from this era. Uh, we didn't get many of those back in the 1980s, um, and it was probably the first storm in the Southwest Indian Ocean to be photographed in that way. Well, the first storm on the Atlantic naming list for this year is Arlene in the Eastern Pacific. It's Adrian in the Central Pacific, of course, we're sitting for Hone. 13 storms so far this year around the world. In the Western Pacific, next up is Sanvu, the North Indian Ocean. We'll be looking out for Mocha. It's been a little while since we had a storm in either of those two areas, so we'll be looking with bated breath to see if we do get our next name soon. Southern Hemisphere, next name in the Australian region will be Ilsa. We expect that will be assigned to that current system. Southwest Indian Ocean, it's Fabienne. And in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.